What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and Al. My name is Max and today is a beautiful evening in May and we've got a visitor from Belgium. This is Mohamed McLaren GT. Now Mohamed has been with us uh, earlier in 2019 with his Audi RS4 back then with like 520 horsepower I believe very quick rs4 and now he is back with his mclaren gt it is what a stunning car but i don't think it has been a big success this car you don't see him ever basically this is only the second time i'm seeing one live and that's a shame because it is drop that gorgeous and the gt aspect of it really appeals to me i think it it's a very very cool concept and today i'm going to show you why i think that we're going to walk around it i'll show you a couple of the cool things on this car and then we'll take it for a drive towards the autobahn for an autobahn blast now the spec of this car is very nice as well we've got a viridian green exterior which is sort of a gray green color with a burgundy interior beautiful spec black roof with a monochromic sunroof so you can change the amount of light that hits the cabin but man what a beautiful car this is basically the 720s but more comfortable um, it's got the same engine the 4 liter and it's 14 centimeters longer than a 720s the wheelbase is longer as well five millimeters than a 720s so it's meant to be suitable for cross-continent touring you've got a bigger boot at the rear as well so yeah a very cool proposition and a beautiful beautiful car at the front big radiator there and some air ducts as well very nice and of course you've got that arrow shape that mclarens always have to slice through the air now while we're here let's take a look at that front boot which is 150 liters if i'm not mistaken there we go that is actually not bad you can fit some some stuff in there 150 liters yeah that's not that's not bad at all you, you could definitely fit a couple of uh, like small suitcases or or quite large bags in there to take for a weekend away and uh, then you've got some more space in the rear let's just cover that right now as well so you've got this lift back basically was that is that there we go so with some netting and some straps to hold stuff down you can see it's completely open and then the engine sits underneath and they have done a lot to insulate the luggage area to uh, not make your golf clubs or skis too hot because yes you could fit a couple of skis in here actually uh, which is pretty insane beautiful forged carbon here as well uh, we've got a carbon tub of course so it is a real mclaren but just with more luggage space very very cool now the engine i can't show you that uh, obviously so uh, the engine sits below the four liter as i said the v8 and it's got smaller turbos compared to a 720s and that is why it's a little bit more suitable for daily driving or for regular driving it's a bit less explosive turbo power and more you know quick response and uh, early torque that's basically why they uh, did that now power wise uh, stock it delivers 620 horsepower and 630 newton meters of torque but this car is not stock it has a tune on it and it's got 770 horsepower now and 987 newton meters of torque that is also quite beautiful super cool so close that up that is actually beautiful and long i mean look at how long that piece of glass is that is insane stunning 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 car don't know why it has failed so badly well i kind of do know because it was i think it was meant to go on sale in 2019 and then mclaren hit some rough times and i think that's why it just got postponed and 
well, people didn't really care anymore when it was released. So beautiful wheels, 20 inch. And behind that, we've got uh, steel brakes. Now, brake pedal feel is not great. Braking performance is okay, but you really have to step on that pedal. And I believe that a little bit after the introduction of the car, they decided that the carbon ceramics, which were optional before, were going to be standard. So I think that has something to do with that. Uh, and yeah, I can really feel that this is not ideal, not optimal. Braking performance is pretty good though. I did step on it earlier and I thought, well, okay, it is pretty good, but the pedal is really heavy. So you don't feel like a lot is happening. Big air intake here with a radiator intake here, some venting, and then at the rear, absolutely stunning rear end. Let me just get those lights back on. That is super, super subtle. A very, very nice rear end. I really like this. Let me know what you guys think about this car in the, in the comments. Let me know if you agree with me, because why, why did this car fail? It is freaking gorgeous. I, I, that question just keeps popping in my mind, both when I'm walking around it, but also when I'm driving it. A beautiful exhaust as well there, protruding from the rear bumper. And then a little ducktail here, a little spoiler, very subtle as well. P-Zeros, 21 inch at the rear, and these are special McLaren tires, as you can see, MC. What a cool car. So, we've got the dihedral doors, of course, that swing out and up, and this even has the GT soft close. So if you just lay it on there, it closes automatically, which is kind of cool. And then, as I said, we've got this beautiful burgundy interior. Bowers and Wilkins audio, super nice carbon top. So you do still have to get over that sill. And then when you get inside, they raised the seats a little bit. So the drop down is a little bit more comfortable, but the seating position is just spot on. It is insane. You sit in it like you sit in a race car. It feels like a spaceship. You've got a big window here in front of you that runs down quite far and visibility all around is really really good so that means that as a as a gt car that definitely works it's not super spacious of course so you know if you compare it to a bentley continental gt yeah it's not going to be as luxurious as spacious whatever but for a mclaren it is really gt-ish Super nice. I have to say the interior quality is very good. The leather is amazing and uh, we've got these one piece metal pedal shifters. Super nice. All this metallic finish. Super nice as well. And then of course down here we've got all the controls for the gearbox, the dual clutch gearbox. And then uh, we've got all the active McLaren stuff. So your handling and powertrain. Steering is hydraulic. Okay, so let's start it up. Now we also have a new infotainment system or a revised one and apparently this is the best one yet uh, which is a good thing because they're usually not that intuitive to operate but you know it's it's quite straightforward you've got all your settings media I have to say the screen is pretty responsive where do we go from here that is volume oh back to home okay so that actually works pretty well. We've even got ambient lighting. Anyway, that's not the stuff you care about. Let's go. So driving, we are going to go for track mode, track mode, exhaust valves open, drive. And there we go. Driving wise, this car is supposed to rival something like a Porsche 911 Turbo S or a Ferrari Roma, stuff like that. You know, stuff that is really daily drivable, but also turns into a freaking beast when you want it to. Sound wise, it's not the most spectacular thing, of course. 
but it does sound very nice. It sounds very urgent and very McLaren. It's just that, that flat blade crank V8 sound, quite high revving as well, 8,500 RPM. It's very recognizable. Now, oh man, it is so quick. The way it, it just gathers speed is, is very, very impressive. Traction control is on, which is a mistake because I can really feel it. So we hit that once and then press it down, ESC off, confirm. So let's do one pull in first gear. Yeah, so it does struggle for traction. Man, that's quick. But the thing only weighs like 1,530 kilos, which is very, very light. And then you've got 770 horsepower. I mean, yeah, it's it's like 60 kilos lighter than a Porsche Turbo S, a 911. And you really feel that combined with the softer springs they put on this car to make it more comfortable and the regular anti-roll bar so it doesn't have the interlinked hydraulic suspension uh, or dampers from a 720S. But because the car is so light, you know, they can get away with making the springs a lot softer. Because you don't have that much stress on the dampers basically from the weight. very impressive <laughs> it just it feels like a car with a purpose you know it, it's it's very effective okay let's do a launch control if that works it doesn't always work yeah full throttle oh. so the GT does 3.2 seconds to 100. Um, you don't, you're not that much quicker with this amount of power because it just struggles for grip. So it's uh, around the same, I would say, 3.2. Oh, jeez. So I can see that the sun is here and I can't see crap so let's find out if this is okay to do it here uh, it's actually okay so it is very very quick as you can see it doesn't need a lot of space to be very quick, if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh, I thought these cars were closer together actually. Anything. This, it, I'm, I'm honestly freaking impressed by this car. It, it just goes. It, it's freaking relentless. This car. There goes my speedo cam. Oh man, 
man, that is freaking quick. Holy moly. I wasn't expecting it to be that quick. It was, it was at like 300 kilometers an hour before I hit the freaking corner to the left there. Man, Mohammed, this thing is crazy. So, it's got more ground clearance than a 720S. It's softer, you've got more luggage space, but still you have that, that mid-engined handling. You know, the car still feels like it turns around your hips. And it still does everything a McLaren should do. the way this thing accelerates is just mental it's very very stable at high speeds it absorbs all the bumps have a little issue I think it's the the window rubbers or something like that that got damaged but other than that very very nice comfortable cruiser slash supercar with incredible performance and it's so empty right now on the Ultimate it's so nice so let's do a, a little 100 to 200 pull Let's do second gear. And that is 100 to 200 in around 5.2 seconds. Which is hella quick. 5.2 seconds, that is seriously fast. It, it, it just, it's still a freaking supercar. I mean, McLaren can call it a GT, but it's still a freaking full-blown supercar. Well, especially, of course, with this tune on it. That, I, I, I have to admit, I forgot that a little bit. It, it has a tune on it, so <laughs> that is why it's so freaking fast, of course. Normally you have 620, now you have 770. That does make a difference. But a 570 has a super quick tune, so. Auto Top and L Diary, entry 385,000. 221 the GoPro is overheating again and I'm thinking about throwing it out the window such a horrible thing okay anyway I was going to say before I hit the straight that uh, I already did like 348 I'm not going to beat that because that was friggin completely empty um, so I'm going to end it here Mohammed you've got an amazing car thank you so much for allowing us to drive your car again it has been my pleasure as always uh, to you guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle you can also check out this video on the right or this playlist on the left see you at the next one bye